This Sunday, there was yet another show of unity this week from Western allies who pledged to supply Ukraine with battle tanks. A decision that had been off the table is now a reality. But as Ukraine prepares for its next counteroffensive, its defense minister says it will need more from allies. And fighter jets are now at the top of his list. Here's what Alexei Reznikov told me in an exclusive interview. Minister Reznikov, thank you so much for being here. I appreciate it very much. Good evening or good morning. It depends on your time. <laughs> I, I want to start, obviously, by asking you about the, the latest uh, announcement here in Canada for your country, the latest military contribution for Leopard 2 tanks uh, for, for Ukraine. What kind of difference will those four tanks mean in terms of all the tanks that you have managed now or will manage to acquire in the next number of months? For us, it's very important because uh, during the last uh, Rammstein meeting, we arranged a uh, so-called uh, tanks coalition with our partners, and it was decided that all uh, country would starting uh, to deliver to us uh, some kind of quantity of tanks, and we will start to formate uh, as minimum two battalion, battalion, and but it's not the end of story; it's no. just the start of story. It was like an example uh, in uh, in a uh, summer it was only two hymers and 24 uh, ammunitions for them but today today we have a, a lot of bit more hymers and mlrs systems and uh, enough uh, rockets for them so it means that four tanks five tanks ten tanks yeah. it means that we will continue and we will arrange i call it iron feast for our armed forces to continue our counteroffensive campaign for the uh, goal to de uh, to liberation or deoccupation of all our temporarily occupied territories. Well, maybe you could tell me what a difference the, the tanks will will make. First of all, I know they're not going to arrive, not only just the, the Canadian ones, but other ones aren't going to arrive for several months even possibly. What difference will they make on the battlefield concretely, Minister? Uh, because we need to arrange a very strong counteroffensive uh, units or platoons and we have to use modern NATO standard systems with uh, other kind of caliber. For example, Soviet tanks has one kind of caliber and NATO uh, tanks has another uh, kind of caliber for the for the cannon in these tanks. Also for maneuver, uh, sure. we will use them as a maneuver and strong uh, face again, I remain reminded, uh, to break through the defending lines in different direction. And it will be. It will take a time for training forces for our tanks cruises, but I I hope we will start it. Uh, we use we will start using them probably in in a, in a spring. You you mentioned that these conversations in Ramstein uh, took place. Obviously, a, a, an effort to try and get the tanks there. There was this reluctancy from Germany, uh, who then decided to change their mind once the U.S. made a contribution. Is it frustrating that? these decisions are still taking perhaps too long uh, for the people on the battlefield? You know, when I was just a uh, fresh appointed minister uh, uh, of defense of Ukraine, I asked of, from my partners, uh, just Stingers, it was before the full scale invasion yes. of Russia. Uh, I asked only Stingers and uh, the answer was, it's impossible, Alexei. And you know that we got uh, Stingers in January, uh, last, last year from uh, Lithuania, and after that, we have a lot of stingers, and loves, uh, javelins, et cetera, et cetera. We have uh, decisions about uh, air defense systems like yes. Iris T, NASA, Patriot. So for me, everything what is impossible today will possible tomorrow. And thanks, uh, discussion also was uh, in this platform. For our German partners, it was a uh, question uh, who will be first in the battlefield with the modern tanks. Mm -hmm. And as you know, the first decision was done by the British uh, government with the challengers. Also, it was the initiative of our Poland partners mm -hmm. with the Leopard tanks also, plus our partners from the France with the AMX-10, it's a light kind of tanks, and plus Abrams from the United States. Right. So it means that, again, we have a good anti-Kremlin coalition. What is the next big thing the Ukrainian army needs to fight the Russians? Uh, my dream was uh, signed in a, in a wish list to the Santa. 
I did it last year. And in this uh, wish list uh, remains uh, jet fighters of flight jets, aircrafts, yes. and probably uh, rockets, kind of Atakams or something else with the long uh, hand uh, options to, to hit the Russians' uh, Full depot, ammunition depot, and their commanders. Do, do you think there is a reluctance? So next step. Yeah. Do you think there is a reluctance yeah, to give jet fighters because it would be viewed as a different? It, it would change the nature of the war, obviously. Yes, like it was Heimer's uh, game changer in the summer. I think that tanks will be again next uh, game changer, and also as well, uh, I'm uh, I expect that uh, fighter jet became also game changer. And I think that it also uh, will be possible. You are getting strong signals from other NATO allies that that is something they will commit to? I think that next one or two weeks will be the weeks of discussions. And uh, we need to deliver a real argument and understanding how we will use them and why we need it. Yeah. And I hope that it will be I see on this in optimism, with optimism. What What is the next thing you need from Canada? What is the next uh, thing on your, your Christmas list <laughs> that uh, you would request uh, from Canada? It's a good it's a good point uh, that we will have from Canada armed, uh, armed vehicle, I mean infantry fighting vehicles, uh, 200 yes. from uh, Rochelle. And also, you know, it's very good uh, step with the NASAMs uh, for Ukraine from the United States and uh, ammunition for them. And also, I hope we will have uh, 155 millimeter caliber artillery systems because we needed more. And uh, I, I'm sure that uh, it it's a, will be next uh, delivering of the tanks. Your deputy defense minister has resigned over allegations of corruption for overpaying for, for food for troops. There are a dozen other officials who have resigned, uh, many of them profiteering essentially from, from the war that is taking place. Why, why do you think um, this happened inside your own department? And, and uh, what do you say to those who say that you should have known that it was happening? You know that I, I became the Minister uh, of Defense. I, I have only two months before the full-scale invasion, or two and a half. I started, I promised to do reforms, and I started doing, but when it was uh, invasion uh, started against us, I had to uh, spend a lot of time in negotiations sure. about the weaponry. Sure. But I have to continue reforms. That my principle is zero tolerance with, uh, with the corruption, zero, zero tolerance with the other kind of allegations. And I need to change team also, mm -hmm. but I need to uh, to have supply to the army in sustainable manner, food, ammunition, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. For me, very important to have a country after this war, after our victory the country not in the soviet uh, old-fashioned systems it should be new ukraine with the european standard yes. without corruption without any uh, legacy well, of soviet era i was going to ask you how important do you think what you're doing and what others are doing to to fight corruption how important is that to becoming a, an active member of the eu potentially or a member of nato that was one of their conditions um and how hard is that to do as you're fighting a war Certainly, that's why we need to continue this reform. We, we have to continue to write the new legislation and we have new body like uh, anti-corruption court, anti-corruption prosecutor, etc., etc. Yes. And also we will use the European standard. In uh, 2nd of February, probably we will have a, a big uh, wide uh, communication platform with the EU com commissars and we will discuss all needs that we have to do uh, again in anti-corruption uh, activity as well. Let me end on this, Minister. Next month marks one year uh, since the invasion that began all this. Um, how hopeful are you that, that this could end this year? Uh, do, do you see that happening? Uh, you know, I'm an optimist and I hope that this year became a year of victory, but we have to do a lot of uh, uh, we have a scope of works, and we have to start uh, when weather condition will uh, be better, and we will formate our counteroffensive uh, platoons. We have to start the counteroffensive campaign accordingly to the plans of our general staff. 
And our goal again, to liberate all our temporarily occupied territories, but we will see how how, how soon is, it would. Uh, it, we, we would like to have it as soon as possible. Mm -hmm. Ukrainian people want that, but we will see. Minister Reznikov, so nice of you to make the time for Canada. Thank you very much, sir. Appreciate it. Thank you.